Hello and welcome back to Through the Trap Door. I'm Katie. And I'm Emily. And this is our podcast where we read you Harry Potter fan fiction. So we're back after our week off due to the injury to Ben. <laughs> he broke his thumb. I think he did more than break his thumb. He like demolished his thumb. Yeah. He broke it in three places and they had to put a pin all the way through it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that was fun. So we're going to come back at you full force after a week off. Oh, what? <laughs> Are you drunk? I know. <laughs> Quite the opposite. I've had nothing to drink. Just a crap ton of water. Oh, oh. Sad. <laughs> um, so after a week off, we're going to come at you with our next chapter story. Something a little bit lighter and funny. I'm excited. I purposely um, searched humor and just wait until you hear the title of this because it is funny. (laughs) It's Harry Potter and the Owl That's Totally Not Suspicious at All. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So, and we are now just going to jump right in on to chapter one. Its title is Who, 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 you know. Harry froze. A white shape, almost silver in the moonlight, lay in the patch of mud he'd attempt to designate an herb garden. It was an owl. Harry's breath caught in his throat. It had been over a year since he'd seen Hedwig knocked out of the air by the green flash of the killing curse, but he couldn't help wonder if maybe it was... But maybe it was just now she was hitting the earth. Where do you live, Harry? Anywhere near that happened? Harry, what are you, what? No, no. Harry. No, Harry. Harry. No. Oh, hold on. Another of his ghosts coming back to haunt him. So maybe we could have kept reading. Still, Harry. Yeah. Harry. Harry. Stop it. A dark chuckle forced its way out. The sound, half misery, half panic. And across the yard, a wing twitched. Harry dashed into his kitchen to grab a thick towel, cursing himself. There was a bird dying and he was being dumb. He could be doing something about it. The owl struggled wildly. Harry winced as he wrapped the obviously broken wing. And again, the owl got a good scratch down his forearm. Well, yeah, you don't just pick up a bird. No, Harry... Especially not an owl. They're birds of prey. They have very long talons. They will scratch you right up. You also ran into the kitchen to get a towel. Like, what What are you doing? Like, why also, did you use the towel? Why do you have thick towels in your kitchen? Also, great question. Why do you have thick towels in your kitchen? Is his washer and dryer in his kitchen? Maybe. Inside was dry and warm, which seemed like an improvement over the cold mud, but... Harry, looking at the bundle of misery and murder in his arms, couldn't be quite sure what else to do. Find the wing, but not while the bird was looking at him like that. Could you give Owl sleeping draft? He didn't think that was covered in care of magical creatures. Harry blinked and grabbed a pinch of flu powder. Hagrid answered his fire call groggily. All right, Harry? Yeah, I'm fine, Harry Grid. Uh, I'm sorry to wake you and I'll... It was later than he'd realized. He hadn't felt like sleeping. Harry thrust out the owl. (laughs) Here, have this. I have an owl! What do I do? An owl? Where'd you find that bugger? Hagrid shuffled closer to the fire, rubbed the sleep out of his eyes. Uh, with a broken... Oh, with a broken wing, poor chap. Hagrid shrugged off Harry's question about how to safely knock out the bird before tending to it. Bite ya? Don't you worry, Harry. A few nips won't hurt. Well, they will hurt, Hagrid. Yes, they will. Clearly, they hurt. Just because you're a giant. Yeah, just because you're a half giant and a few owl nips don't hurt you. Harry, the frail little child man boy, it will hurt him. Yes. He bleeds. Man boy. (laughs) Man boy. Like, I just slipped that right in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it turned out Harry did not need to transfigure a suit of armor from a bathrobe and an oven mitt before. 
fighting to wrap the wing. I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> it is something that Harry would 100% do, though. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to do. Man, let's get a suit of armor. Though he planned it out with slow methodicalness of plans formed past 1 a.m. Oh, nothing good happens after midnight. True. Nothing good happens after midnight. There, there was an avian equivalent of Skelligro that Hagrid handed him through the flu. Why didn't Hagrid just come through the flu? I don't know. To wrap the wing for Harry. I know, seriously. Hagrid, you clearly know what to do. Or why didn't Harry step through so that Hagrid could wrap it? I know. Especially if he's still there handing Harry things. Right. Like, come on, guys. Harry tipped the prescribed amount into a dish and the owl showed absolutely no intention of drinking from. Just pry his beak open, Hagrid motioned, helpfully from the fire. You can do it, Harry, he yawned. Bring that bottle back when you visit, will ya? And with that, he shut off the flu and disappeared. They're kind of referring to the flu more as, like, FaceTime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But also, again, Hagrid, why didn't you just go through the fire and do it? Right. Don't just be like, yeah, Harry just prized beak open. That's like telling someone with a cat, you know, just hold their jaws open, shove the pill down their throat. Good luck. Bye. No, it doesn't work that way. They will bite you. Harry stared helplessly at the bird. He sat the potion down and awkwardly fumbled his wand out of his sweatpants pocket. Why are you wearing sweatpants? Oh, it's 1 a.m. It is 1 a.m. All right. But also, why are you keeping your wand in your pocket? Did Alistair Moody tell you never to do that? He said not to keep it in your back pocket. All right. Well, I don't see how the front sweatpants pocket is any less dangerous. Me either, but you, Harry has to be told specifically not to do things. That's very true. His right hand was holding the owl, and it seemed too late to switch. Harry sighed and pointed his wand in the attic. Asio Hedwig's cage. What? No. Uh, mm. Harry, you don't have Hedwig's cage. Is this, is this person referring to Hedwig's movie death or her book death? Must be her movie death. Which I feel like was far more heroic for Hedwig. So he just has this... Maybe he went back and found it. I don't know. Maybe he has a spare cage. Maybe. All right. His voice caught on his words, but despite the stumble and jerky left-handedness, there was still a series of sharp clangs as the cage worked its way out of the pile of boxes. He'd deal with that mess tomorrow. A quick cleaning charm removed the worst of the dust. Harry rolled the owl easily enough, but looking at its glazed eyes and unsteady stance, he thought He'd prefer a bite, like the owl's hungry, or is the owl going to bite you? No, I think he's saying that Harry would prefer to be bitten over the, like, glazed, glassy look the owl has. Oh, all right, cool, cool. It was a barn owl from its distinctive heart-shaped face, but paler even than normal with unusual gray eyes. Hmm. Hmm. (laughs) Harry slid in a dish of water and rummaged through the fridge, he rather wanted Molly's Bistro for himself, but upon but upon sniffing everything else in the fridge, there wasn't much. He ladled chunks of beef and vegetable into another dish. Harry eyed the swaying owl and slid half the stew back into the fridge, cut, cut the smaller portion into bite-sized pieces. If you can eat that and keep it down, you can have more. The owl showed no signs of touching the water or the stew, especially not the cup of Skelligro. I don't particularly blame you on that one, mate. The owl slowly closed its silver eyes and slumped against the side of the cage. Harry stared. Please be exhausted and not dead, he pleaded. Harry ran a hand through his hair. He did not want to deal with this. No, I don't want to deal with the dead owl either, Harry, so fair. Yeah, I would not want that. Harry didn't know if he should force the bird to have some water and food or just leave it alone. He resisted the urge to fire call, ha- fire call Hagrid again. Surely he had a book on owls around here somewhere. Ron actually gifted him a manual in fourth year after he had realized that Harry hadn't purposely thrown himself into the death tournament that he was horribly unprepared for. Ron said vaguely that... It might be useful. That particular year, it really, really hadn't been, 
but Harry had appreciated the intent. He'd just assio the book from the attic with another round of clatter and muster the courage to go see if the owl was still alive. Then it moved. Harry breathed a sigh of relief. Just gets right into it. Yes, it does. <laughs> There's no build-up to this, guys. <laughs> Draco woke up slowly. His arm throbbed. He moved, and the sharp pain shot through his lip, his limb. He hissed, but it came out as a soft hoot. Draco blinked. His eyes felt big, and when he looked around, his head moved, too. Draco cursed. He remembered flying long swoops over the countryside. He hadn't been pleased exactly to, to find out that his animagus was an owl. Bitch, why not? I mean, you get to fly. Cool. So, uh, fun off rant. I'm here. Uh, I saw a post the other day on Facebook about uh, how come nobody ever talks about McGonagall's Patronus. Because it's her? Because it's literally herself. Yeah. In her animagus form. Uh, McGonagall don't need nobody to protect McGonagall but McGonagall. <laughs> that is fantastic. Her Patronus is legitimately her own damn soul. Which, I mean, I get. Like, McGonagall's the best option for herself. Yeah. But it's fantastic. Isn't that just the best? It's the best. So that makes me wonder, though, if everyone's Patronus is what their Animagus would be. Hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Because that's what James was. And did, it, did anyone ever talk about uh Nobody Sirius? ever talked about their Patronuses. But I feel like everyone acted like James had a very special Patronus. Yeah, but... But I don't know if it's just, like... Plus, I... We we have to feel like Dumbledore had an animagus form. Oh, yeah. And it had to have been a phoenix. Because that's just who Dumbledore is. But why would he turn into a phoenix when he has a phoenix? But that's because he never actually... We never watched him transform into anything. Plus, like, could you technically turn into a phoenix and then, like, what? not come back to life when you die? Oh. Like, would you still have, like, the same life cycle as a phoenix? Oh, I don't know. And you wouldn't, like, would you still have all of the same magical properties of a phoenix? Yeah. Because a phoenix was his Patronus. Yes. But phoenixes have a lot of magical properties. So if that's your... Animagus form, do you get all the magical properties of your Animagus? That's a really, really good question. Because in that case, Dumbledore didn't actually die. He was just waiting for his burning day to happen. He hadn't exactly been pleased to find out his Animagus was an owl. It was rather common. Mm, don't think so. The first thrill of flying, however, had rather settled any doubts he had. One wouldn't think it'd be much better than a broomstick, but they'd be dead wrong. Well, of course flying without a broomstick would be way better in your animagus form. He'd only had one glorious hour of gliding through the dark sky, adjusting to his new senses, however, before it had all gone rather pear-shaped. There'd been a thestral and falling. He'd passed out for a bit, he thought. Then there'd been a person. He remembered being trapped and manhandled. Too hurt and confused to transform, Draco panicked, banging his hurt wing painfully against the bars of his cage. His cage? This wouldn't have happened if his animagus had been something better. Like, he didn't know, a dragon? He'd still be able to fly and also non-verbally roast whoever dared to stick him in this metal contraption. Whoa, whoa, a voice soothed. Draco froze. His head swiveled automatically toward the sound. Towering above him was Harry Potter. Of course. The fight went out of him. Draco was so, so tired of everything going wrong. Of course Harry Potter would be here. He was. He was an owl, and he was in a cage, and the person who'd put him there was none other than Harry Bloody Potter. Draco swayed dizzily. Come on, Potter pleaded, and Draco eyed him warily. Everything hurt. 
just drink some water and eat some food. Then you can go back to sleep. The black-haired wizard pointed a finger at the blue cup. And if you drink, if you drink that, even though I know it's nasty, your wing will be all healed up and I can let you out. Draco wanted to snort. Bloody Potter, trying to reason with an owl as if it could understand him. But, well, Draco supposed he could. And while he really, really didn't want anything, Scaligro wasn't good to take on on an empty stomach. Draco sipped at the water and Potter's face lit up as if he witnessed a miracle. The detail in which Draco could see his pores should have been off-putting. It should have been creepy how owl vision faded Potter's warm brown skin to a gray scale. But somehow, Potter still had a stupidly nice smile. The git, Draco scowled. Or he would if he had had lips. Coloring doesn't change Harry's smile, Draco. Also, you noticed he had a stupidly nice smile? Draco. Oh, Draco. Next, Draco eyed the stew. At least it wasn't raw mice. Though if Potter had cooked it, Draco wondered if he wouldn't prefer a mouse. I don't know. I'd still think I'd take cooked food. Probably. Even as an owl. Yeah. You don't want to cough up all the bones. Yeah, that doesn't seem fun. No. Potter's ineptitude at potions did not particularly indicate culinary skill or basic food safety. That does seem like a very hairy thing. Also, fair assessment. Yes. Fair assessment. Piece by piece, Draco picked through the stew, except the carrot. His owl palate was probably con completely different from his human one, but it really doesn't wor wasn't worth the risk. So Draco hates carrots. But carrots are delicious. I also hate carrots, so I get it. Mm. It's the texture. I can't mm. deal with it. Cooked, raw, anyway. Mm. Finally, Draco was finished. It had been exhausting. He glared at Potter. The git was nearly clapping. <laughs> it wasn't as if Draco defeated a dark lord. He'd eaten food. Well, Draco, before that, you had been laying almost dead in the bottom of the cage, so... So, yeah. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. His wings still pulsed with pain, but Draco closed his eyes for to rest a moment before taking the Skelligro. It would taste revolting and hurt to boot. Potter hefted himself from the chair where he'd been avidly watching Draco eat. Hold on, he said. I've got an idea. Draco snorted. And the sound came out oddly. Well, yeah, because you're an owl. Potter came back with another dish of stew chunks and carefully dipped one into the skelegro and held it out. Draco strongly considered biting him. But, well, he was exhausted. And how many opportunities did he really have to be hand-fed by the Chosen One? <laughs> Of course Draco would think of that. Of course he would, because that is the way Draco thinks. Obviously. Ooh, I'm going to take advantage of this. Yes. Draco took the piece of meat delicately and swallowed it down. His wing began tingling uncomfortably. But before he could pay much attention, Harry held out another chunk of beef. You're doing great. I know your wing feels weird, but just keep eating. It'll feel much better. Aw, Harry being so supportive. He's being so adorable. Draco tipped his head to swallow a new morsel. Being an owl was rather easy. If you were an owl, then apparently Harry Potter would look at you with those green eyes that Draco couldn't even see in color right now, full of concern, and be happy with your eating. Not that Potter would have had an easy of time with a normal owl. Even disguised by surprisingly good stew, Skelligro was disgusting. Eventually, Draco shook his wing and the bone felt strange and wobbly, but whole. Potter coaxed him out of the cage and Draco spread his wings gladly. They felt fine, but the feathers were a mess. Aggravated, he set to grooming. Potter laughed. You're a pretty bird and I'd say you know it. Draco glared, but did not stop plucking through the bent quills. Just because Potter had never met a hairbrush didn't mean everyone else had to be as lazy. And of course, he was a fine looking owl. It wasn't like he'd 
worry his animagus would be a troll. What if it actually was a troll? That would have been amazing. <laughs> oh my god, Draco turning into a goddamn troll. That'd be hilarious. Potter stretched. I'm off to bed for the night. Don't get into too much trouble. Draco found he did not have an eyebrow to raise. Instead, he glared. His range of expression may be limited, but he had a very satisfying glare. Dun, dun, dun. And that's the end of this first chapter. Up next, Harry buys food and treats for the owl that he's not at all planning to keep. Draco does not eat mice. Thank you very much. <laughs> I just felt like I needed to add that at the yes, end there. I love that. That was delightful. I think this is going to be a good little story. It's yeah. only, what, six chapters? I think it's only six chapters, yeah, so it's a nice little quick one before we get into a couple more short stories and then into something even longer. Yeah. But a nice little fun treat for the summer. Yeah. All right, I think that's all I got for you guys. See you guys next week. See you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us on our journey through the trap door. Please leave us a review on Facebook or iTunes. It would literally mean the world to us. It really would. Uh, You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at ThroughTheTrapDoor16 or on Twitter at TheTrapDoor. And please send us an email at ThroughTheTrapDoor16 at gmail.com with any story suggestions. And as always, join us again next Saturday as we travel through the trapdoor.